dreadful. C for comedy, A for Abbott, M for Maxwell, T for Ennis, L for Luke Costello. Put them all together and they spell camel. Experience is the best teacher. Try a camel. Let your own experience tell you why more people are smoking camels than ever before. And draw up a chair for tonight's camel show starring Bud Abbott and Luke Costello. Costello, Costello, come over here. Look at you. Look at yourself. You're all, you're all covered with dust. Huh? You're all covered with dust. Where did you get so dirty? I was over at your house, Abbott. I've been helping your wife do her spring cleaning. My house isn't that dirty. Oh, no? When I got through cleaning, we found four new rooms. <laughs> hey, Abbott, I nearly got... No, Abbott, hey, Abbott. Hey, Abbott, and I nearly got arrested, too. Uh, no, I nearly got arrested. How come? I ran out on the porch to shake the dust mop. And a woman across the street called the cops. Why? She thought I was choking your wife. I... <laughs> oh, talk sense. You know you ought to have a house of your own. Settle down. Find some nice girl. Why is it you don't ever seem to get along with girls, Lou? Abbott, when it comes to girls, I really got a late start in life. You see, my parents were very strict. You mean they wouldn't let you go out with the opposite sex? They wouldn't even tell me which was the opposite sex. <laughs> Only this morning, my father told me never to go out with girls. Uh, where is your father now? Out with girls? I... <laughs> but since I'm out here in Hollywood, Abbott, I found out about girls. I've rubbed shoulders with Lana Turner, I rubbed shoulders with Hedy Lamar, and I rubbed shoulders with Betty Grable. And what did you find out? They all wear shoulder pads. I... <laughs> but I don't worry about girls. I'd rather have my canary. Uh, oh. She's so smart. But, what do you mean, so smart? What's so smart about a canary? Can you take a bath in a saucer? I... <laughs> Talk sense. How about uh, Marilyn Maxwell? Don't, don't you date her anymore? I called Marilyn yesterday to go nightclubbing with me, but she wouldn't go. Well, so what? There are other fish in the sea. Yeah, but how would I look dancing at the Macambo with a mackerel? I... <laughs> Costello, you're the dumbest man I ever met. You're a baby baboon. Well? well? Did you hear me? Yes, Daddy. Uh, <laughs> listen to me, you nitwit. Tomorrow is Marilyn Maxwell's birthday. Now, if you want to make a big hit with her, why don't you buy her a nice present? Well, I only got a few dollars, Abbott. I can't buy her nothing expensive. Oh, have no fear, Costello, but Abbott's your pal. <laughs> He'll help you. You know me. Yes. I'll show you how to make some money fast. We'll invest your money in the stock market. Now, you know my brother has a seat on the curb. Yes, I know. Isn't he afraid he'll catch cold sitting there with his feet dangling in a gutter? No, 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 you dummy. When I say he has a seat on the curb, I don't mean he sits on the curb. I mean his seat is on the curb. No matter how you look at it, Abbott, he's a loafer. No, no, he's... <laughs> he's not a loafer, he's a broker. He ain't any broker than I am. <laughs> he's not broke, he's a broker. A broker is a trader. Your brother's a trader? Uh, certainly. He's one of the biggest traders in the country. Bigger than Benedict Arnold? I... <laughs> Costello, Benedict Arnold was a traitor. My brother is a traitor. He goes into the market and sells shorts. He sells shorts? Oh, you mean he's an underwear trader? No, no, no. no. no my... <laughs> now, my brother sells short in the market. He's a bear. A man that sells his stock short in the market is a bear. Any man that will sell his shorts in the market deserves to be bear. Oh, Costello, <laughs> there are two kinds of traders in the market. There are bears and bulls. Now, they got bears and bulls in the market? That's right. No wonder the meat I've been getting is so tough. No, no, you... <laughs> you idiot, I'm not talking about a meat market. I'm talking about a stock market. The traders are called bears and bulls. The bulls are short and the... I mean, the bears are short and the bulls are long. And they're always fighting each other. And that's what makes the market go up and down. They got long bulls fighting short bears and the market is going up and down? Well, certainly. No wonder the joint is jumping. <laughs> hey, Abbott, have, have you ever been mixed up with them bulls? Why? You sound like you had a couple of snorts. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you dummy, I'm only trying to explain to you that my brother is a broker and he has a seat on the curb. Did he always have a seat on the curb? No, he used to have a seat on the exchange, but the bottom dropped out of his shares. <laughs> the bottom dropped out of his shares? Yes. Well, if he's too cheap to get new bottoms for his chairs, let him sit on a curb. Oh, no, 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 no. He's doing all right. He made a fine investment. He just bought some gilt-edge debentures. 
Then why don't he get up off the curb and sit on the debenture? No. <laughs> Shut up and listen to me. My brother is a broker. He takes people's money and invests it. He puts it in something. What does he put it in? Well, sometimes he puts it in oil. He puts money in oil? Certainly. Oil is a solid investment. Oh, I see. He puts it in solid oil. <laughs> then I suppose he pours vinegar on it and eats it. Now, there's a pretty picture for you. A bowl of crispy 10s and 20s with mayonnaise on a side. Oh, no. <laughs> yes, simpleton. You, you can't make a salad of money. Money is legal tender. No wonder it's tender. Your brother keeps digging it and deepening it in oil. No. <laughs> he does not dip it in the oil. He invests it. Here, I'll give you an example. Suppose you want some steel stocks or copper stocks. Or you want to get into American cans. That did it, Abbott. This time you've gone too far. <laughs> what do you mean? Well, I didn't say nothing when you told me your brother sits on a curb in his shorts. I didn't call the FBI when you told me that he was a traitor. And I didn't squeal to the Humane Society when you said he chases long bulls and short bears around in the market. But when you have the nerve to tell me to steal stock so that a copper can throw me in the can, you have not only blackened my good name and impute upon me, but you have cast a smog over the United Nations Conference. <laughs> and that's not good. <laughs> Experience is the best teacher. Tense excitement aboard a powerboat and blue Gulf Stream water crashed to white foam. Mrs. Dorothy Allen Newstead plays a fish. But what a fish. A big, vicious fighter. Tireless, gamey. It takes 35 minutes to land him. And, wow, he's a yellow-bellied cobia weighing in at 69 pounds to set a world's record. As Mrs. Newstead, holder of the International Women's All-Tackle Record for Cobia, said, Experience is the best teacher in deep-sea fishing and in cigarettes, too. After all the different brands I smoked during the war shortage, I really appreciate camels. Yes, during the wartime cigarette shortage, experience taught millions the differences in cigarette quality. Folks smoked whatever cigarettes they could get, compared more different brands than they'd ordinarily try in 10 years. They tested one brand against another in their tea zones. That's tea for taste, tea for throat. Result? Today, more people smoke camels than ever before. The rich, full flavor and the cool mildness of camels suit millions of T-zones to a T. Experience is the best teacher. Try a camel. Time now to light up a camel and listen to Skinny Anna sing... Heartaches, heartaches My loving you may only heartaches your kiss was such a sacred thing to me I can't believe it's just a burning memory Heartaches, heartaches What does it matter how my heart breaks I should be happy with someone new But my heart aches for you Does it matter how my heart breaks? I should be happy with someone new, but my heart aches for you. something nice for her birthday. Now, why don't you get her a nice mink coat like uh, Mrs. Wetwash wears? Now, that's an Eastern uh, mink with uh, fur five inches long. It looks more like a Western skunk with five o'clock shadow. <laughs> but you, you should give uh, Marilyn something expensive. She never, she never forgets you. You're right, Abbott. 
Last year, she gave me a lovely present. A Japanese Harry Carey sword with a complete set of instructions. Uh, <laughs> you talk sense. If you invest those few dollars on the stock market, you can make enough money to buy her a mink coat, Lou. Well, if it isn't Mr. Abbott. Oh, I see you're going back in vaudeville. Uh, Mrs. Wetwash, I am not going back in vaudeville. Then what are you doing with that train seal? <laughs> <laughs> oh, pardon me. It's Costello. Now, just a second, Mrs. Wetwash. I don't look like a train seal. Well, maybe not, but I'm thankful I'm not a herring. <laughs> you ain't half as thankful as the herrings are. I... <laughs> Cut that out, Costello. Uh, Mrs. Wetwash, Costello wants to make some money quick. Now, your late husband made a lot of money. Could you tell us how he did it? Well, my husband was a powerful man. He was a magnet. He must have had a powerful magnet to pick up a load of scrap iron like you. (laughs) Why, you cut-rate Sidney Greenstreet. (laughs) Mr. Abbott. Why does Costello need all this money? Well, it's uh, Marilyn Maxwell's birthday, and Costello wants to buy her a mink coat. A mink coat for Maxwell? Uh, what do you see in Marilyn Maxwell? Why, take away her blonde hair and her good looks, and what have you got? I don't know, but you can deliver it to my house tomorrow morning. <laughs> oh. oh, you're in the Goodbye. Well, Costello, that settles it. We're going to the broker's office and invest your money. Come on. (laughs) Well, here's the broker's office, Costello. Let's go and invest your money. Then you can buy Marilyn that mink coat. Abbott, I think it's better if I buy her one of them machines and let her whip up her own mink coat. Now, wait a minute. What kind of a machine whips up a mink coat? Ain't you never heard of a minx master? (laughs) Mink... Now, never mind that. Come on, let's go in. Hiya, fellas. Well, Skinny Ennis, what are you doing? <laughs> Buying some stock? Yep. I got all my money invested in the, the Doodoc Company. They make zippers. Zippers? <laughs> sure. Ain't you never heard of zippity doo Ah, get out of here. How do you do, suckers? I, I mean, gentlemen. Uh, I'm a stockbroker. What can I do for you? Well, my friend Costello here would like to invest in a quick-moving stock. Okay. Then grab this kitchen chair and this whip and follow me. Why do I need the kitchen chair and the whip? I'm going to take you in the back room and show you some of our wildcat stock. <laughs> you can sell short and be a bear or buy long and be a bull. Now, what would you like? I'll take a short bear with a bull of pretzels. <laughs> and see what those wild cats in the back room will have. <laughs> Tell the man what stock he'll want. Look, mister, give me 50 shares of Walter Winchell and 40 shares of Hedda Hopper. Walter Winchell and Hedda Hopper? What kind of stock is that? American tell and tell. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, you have just heard the last joke that Luella Parsons will ever write for this show. <laughs> Costello? Costello, I'll give you a good tip. Get in on Hiawatha Canoe. Mister, when I get in a canoe, I don't need any tip from you. I can tip myself... And get a quicker turnover, too. Look, uh, talk By sense. myself. Look, Costello, uh, do as the man says. All right. Here, give me ten shares of Hiawatha Canoe stock. Attention, latest stock quotations. Hiawatha Canoe's 51. Hiawatha Canoe's 63. Hiawatha Canoe's 81. Hey, Costello, what? you hear that? Your stock has gone up. 26 points already. Hooray, I'm rich. Come on, let's go to the first store. I'm going to buy Maryland the best mink coat in town. <laughs> Well, Costello, they've certainly got plenty of fur coats in this store. Oh, Come yes. on, we'll, uh, let's ask the lady where the mink uh, coats are. Uh, pardon me, miss. Well, <laughs> if it isn't Mr. Orbit and Mr. Costello, you fought, little one. You. <laughs> well, miss, what are you doing? What are you doing here at the furriers? Oh, I'm putting my new silver Fuchs coat in storage. Storage? Storage? <laughs> storage. Oh, Abbott, you know what storage is. That's where you fill the... Pookets of your coot with mooth bulls and hang it in the clohuset. <laughs> well, I must be doshing off. As we say in Russian, a panya via kalyapinya can pushka to you. And a pan of veal scalapini and a push to you, too. Castello, <laughs> hey, I think this chap is a furry. Uh, pardon me, sir. Are yes. you the salesman? Yes. As Mrs. Nussbaum said to Fred Allen, you were expecting maybe Lauren Bagel. <laughs> Listen, I want to buy a 
a fur coat and I don't care what it costs. What have you got for about $65? $65? Well, here's a lovely little number made from the fur of an animal called the Whipsonov. What is a Whipsonov? A Whipsonov is an animal that lives on onions and garlic. And believe me, one whip's enough. <laughs> hey, look, Mr. Costello wants to buy a mink coat for Marilyn Maxwell. Well, as Mr. Anthony said to young Widow Brown, you have a problem. <laughs> now, here is a lovely mink coat for $3,500. All right, well, that's all right. Come on, Costello, buy the coat and have it sent over to Marilyn Maxwell's house. We've got to get back to the broker's office and see how your stock is doing. Fine, I'll deliver it to Miss Maxwell. That'll be $3,500. Okay, here's my check. And as Lady Godiva said to her horse, I'm putting everything I've got on you. <laughs> Come on, Costello. The broker's office closes in ten minutes, you know. Hey, look, Costello. Hey, what? they're marking up the quotations on Hiawatha Canoe Stock. Hiawatha Canoe, 95. Quick, Abbott. I gotta mark down my profits. Give me a pencil. Hiawatha Canoe, 63. Give me another pencil. Hiawatha Canoe, 21. Another pencil. Hiawatha Canoe, nine and a half. Pencil. Hiawatha Canoe, wiped out. Pencil. Pencils, pencils. Anybody want to buy any pencils? Pencils for sale. Marilyn Maxwell from Metro Golden Mayor, producers of It Happened in Brooklyn. And here's Marilyn to sing for camel fans everywhere for sentimental reasons. I love you for sentimental reasons. I hope you do believe me. I'll give you my heart. I love you. And you alone were meant for me Please give your loving heart to me And say we'll never part I think of you every morning Dream of you every night Darling, I'm never lonely Whenever you're inside I love you For sentimental reasons I hope you do believe me I've given you my heart I hope you do believe me I've given you my heart I love you And I've given you According to a recent nationwide survey, more doctors smoke camels than any other cigarette. Yes, three leading independent research organizations asked this question of 113,597 doctors. What cigarette do you smoke, doctor? The brand named most was Camel. And this preference is not confined to doctors. Today, more and more people are finding that camels suit their T-zones to a T. Try a camel on your T-zone. That's T for taste and T for throat. See if Camel's rich, full-bodied flavor of choice tobaccos doesn't charm your taste. If Camel's cool mildness doesn't agree with your throat. Yes, try a Camel now. Well, Castelli, you did it again. You lost all your money in the stock market. You're penniless. You're poverty-stricken. Why, when you walk down the street, everybody will say, there goes that tramp Costello. Have it. Some people will say, there goes that tramp Costello. But my friends won't say that. No. Well, what will your friends say? There goes Mr. Costello, the tramp. Yeah. 
You, you idiot, you know nothing about handling money. Abbott, when it comes to handling money, nobody can hold a candle to me. Why not? It burns. Uh, <laughs> Costello, this is ridiculous. It's ridiculous, Costello. Look, hey, here comes Marilyn Maxwell, and she's wearing the coat. Remember, you've got to get it away from her some way, and return it to the store, you'll go to jail. Oh, there you are, Louis, my darling. How can I ever thank you for this beautiful mink coat? It's the nicest present I ever got. Marilyn, it ain't good enough for you. I'm going to take it back and get something better. Louis, what could be better than mink? Box of candy? <laughs> Costella, if you don't get that coat, you'll get ten years in jail. Louis, honey, I know it's your birthday next month, so what do you want me to bring you? A cake with a file in it. <laughs> Oh, Louis, you're so romantic. It's such a gorgeous night. Just look at that lovely moon and those bright stars. Yeah, a guy is nuts not to be out catching eels on a night like this. <laughs> well, thanks for the coat, Louis. I'm going home now. Goodbye. Goodbye. Uh, yeah, now you've done it, you idiot. You've got to return that coat. You have to break into her house and steal it. Have it. My uncle broke into a girl's house and stole back a diamond ring he gave her. Now, what, which uncle was that? Uncle 914758. <laughs> Yes, but the trick is to break in without getting caught. Now, here's what we'll do. Marilyn Maxwell is crazy about Von Monroe singing. Uh, you call her on the phone. Make believe you're Von Monroe and invite her here to the studio. And while she's out of the house, you break in and steal a coat. Abbott, Marilyn likes Al Joseph singing, too. Why don't we let Larry Parks call up? Let him get the coat. Oh, get on the phone, you idiot, and try to sound like Von Monroe. Okay. Oh, I'll sound like Von Monroe. Where do I tighten the muscles on my tonsils? Hello? Racing with the moon. <laughs> Hello, who is this? Racing with the moon. <laughs> who is this? It's Vaughn. Vaughn? Oh, you mean Vaughn Johnson. <laughs> now, now, listen. Racing with the moon. Oh, it's Vaughn Monroe. In poison! Oh, Mr. Monroe, it's so nice of you to call. Marilyn, I'm down here at the studio. How would you like to come down and sing a duet with me on my program? Oh, I'd love it. I'll be right down, and I'll wear my new mink coat. It's a Lulu. Racing, and don't bring Lulu. <laughs> Well, you see, my program is informal, so you better leave your mink coat at home. Well, all right, Mr. Monroe, if you say so. I'll be right over. Goodbye. She fell for it, Abbott. Good. Now we'll go over to Marilyn's house and sneak in the window. Then you get the mink coat. Abbott, I'm sorry I didn't give that coat to Mrs. Wetwash. Why? Her windows are easier to open. Never mind that. <laughs> Shh. Shh. Costello. What? Now, that's Marilyn's window up there. Yeah. Get a ladder. Place it against the house, and I'll climb up and open the window for you. Okay, here's the ladder. Start climbing. I'm sorry, Abbott. That's no ladder. It's a Venetian blind. <laughs> Lucky, Maron. Uh, hey, wait a minute. There's the far coat on that chair. The yeah. window's open. Reach in and grab it. Okay, okay, Abbott. Well, well, burglars, eh? Come along with me. I'm taking you to jail. Oh, look, officer. We're Abbott and Costello. Now, if you'll forget about this little incident, I'll give you two tickets to our next broadcast. What oh, ho! Threatening an officer, eh? <laughs> Get in the squad car of the boss of you. Calling all cars. Attention all cars. Attention all cars. That's the police radio. Calling car 18. Attention car 18. You are now car 19. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Order in the court. Costello, you are charged with stealing a mink coat. What have you got to say? Your Honor, I can explain the whole thing. I'm in a jam because of marmalading circumstances. Therefore, it becomes necessary to interrogate the corpus delecti and taking into consideration irium, lanolin, and jabberandy. It is insidious, immaterial, and irrelevant. <laughs> How can you say that? It's easy when you don't know what you're saying. <laughs> Costello, will you keep quiet? There's enough of this. Costello, I sentence you to five years. And hard labor. You mean breaking rocks at Alcatraz? No, real hard labor. Finding apartments for California veterans. <laughs> Come, on. Well, Come on, Costello. Let's get back to uh, NBC Studios and explain the whole thing to Marilyn. Oh, wait a minute. She... <laughs> oh, 
Well, but I'm ashamed to face Maryland. You should be ashamed gambling your money in the stock market when you know absolutely nothing about it. Giving a check for, for $3,500 when you have no money in the bank. And then stooping so low as to steal the coat back. Do you realize the humiliation that you have caused me? My partner, why do you do these things to me? Oh, I'm a <laughs> boy! <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't blame Merlin if she never spoke to me again. Oh, Louis, Louis, the most exciting thing has happened to me. I just had a date with Von Monroe. He's so sweet, and he's interested in my singing, and he's going to be my manager. Abbott, you did this? Merlin, why don't you let me be your manager? Ah, oh, Costello, you know nothing about girl singers and, uh, and what it takes to make a girl uh, successful. I do, too. First, a girl has got to have a good voice. And? Well, it helps if she's pretty. And? And it don't hurt nothing if her father is president. <laughs> oh, Louis. Louis, I don't want to hurt your feelings, but Vaughn said it was wrong for me to accept that mink coat from you, so you'll have to take it back. Vaughn said so. Well, Costello, aren't you going to say something? Racing with the moon. <laughs> Costello will be back in just a moment for Camel Cigarettes. During the war, the makers of Camel Cigarettes sent a total of more than 150 million free camels to our fighting men overseas. Now free camels are sent to servicemen's hospitals instead. This week, the camels go to Veterans Hospital, Marion, Indiana, USAF Station Hospital, McDill Field, Tampa, Florida, U.S. Naval Hospital, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, U.S. Marine Hospital, Memphis, Tennessee, and Veterans Hospital, McKinney, Texas. Camel broadcasts go out to the United States three times a week. I rebroadcast to practically every area in the world where our men are still stationed and to our good neighbors in Central and South America. And now back to Bud Abbott and Luke Costello. Well, Costello, it looks like uh, Von Monroe has cut you out with Marilyn Maxwell. Well, what are you going to do for a date tonight? Give me that phone. I can get plenty of girls. I'll get a date. Hello? Let me talk to Jane Russell. Yes, I'm a very, very dear close friend of hers. Who are you? Uh oh, her husband? Bob Waterfield, the football player? Oh, just tell her that Bob Hope called. No. <laughs> Come on, Castella. Good night, folks. Good night. Good night, everybody. Listen to Abbott and Costello next Thursday when Costello tells his version of the famous story, The Three Little Pigs which incidentally has nothing to do with the bears and bulls that you heard about tonight. More pipe smoke Prince Albert than any other tobacco. Try Prince Albert and learn the reasons for this popularity. Get acquainted with Prince Albert's rich, full flavor. Enjoy Prince Albert's tongue ease. PA is specially treated to ensure against tongue bite, and it's crimp cut to smoke slow and even. Get Prince Albert for real smoking joy. Don't miss Prince Albert's Grand Ole Opry Saturday night. Red Foley sings American folk songs in a new heart-stirring way. Plenty of foot-tapping music and laughs. So don't forget to tune in to NBC Saturday night for Grand Ole Opry with Red Foley, the Duke of Paducah, and Minnie Pearl. Be sure to tune in next week for another great Abbott and Costello show brought to you by Camel Cigarettes. And remember, experience is the best teacher. Try a camel. Let your own experience tell you why more people are smoking camels than ever before. C-A-M-E-L-S. Abbott and Costello will soon be seen in the new Universal International picture, Buck Privates Come Home. This is Michael Roy in Hollywood wishing you all a pleasant good night for camels. Stay tuned now for the Eddie Cantor Show. This is NBC.